everyone, Jennifer here. Thank you so much for joining me on The Daily Commissar today. I am so excited because we have two special guests with us today. We have Cliff Simon and Lauren Stevens, the authors of Paris Nights, My Year at the Moulin Rouge. And this is a brand new memoir, and it's about Cliff's experience as a dancer at the Moulin Rouge. And so I'm so fortunate to have Cliff here today with me and you're going to get to meet Lauren in just a moment and we are going to discuss all things Paris because I just can't wait to hear his thoughts on one of my and our favorite cities. So welcome Cliff, thank you so much for coming. Thanks Jennifer, it's great to be here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Cliff, you might actually recognize him. Cliff mm -hmm. is an actor and he is on shows that you might have seen like Stargate, The Americans, NCIS, and many other shows like that. But Cliff is also now a writer. So I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, obviously you're an actor, you're a right. dancer, an athlete. And so what made you transition into writing and what made you want to write this memoir? Um, you know what I thought, I, I always had f feedback I had from people after telling them stories and knowing that looking at the whole world, not that many people have worked at such an iconic cabaret such as Moulin Rouge yes. uh, in Paris. And uh, I had some unique stories. No one has ever written about the Moulin Rouge, the behind the scenes, um, and what goes on there. It's never been written about. The owners have been approached to do autobiographies and they've always turned it down. Mm. So I thought I'd give people an insight into what it's like to be at you know, a world famous um, cabaret. And that's what's so interesting about both of our books, I think, because in, in Lessons from Madame Chic, I always said nobody writes about what goes on behind the closed doors in a French household. Right. And you are the same thing. Nobody right. knows the, the behind the scenes story of the Moulin Rouge. And that's what is so awesome about um, Cliff's memoir. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so I have my list of questions that I want to ask Cliff about Paris. So. Uh, the first one, obviously people will read the book, but if you could just briefly tell us, what was it like being a male dancer at the Moulin Rouge? Uh, it was amazing. I mean, just being a dancer at the Moulin Rouge is amazing. Um, number one, because it's so famous and you really feel part of a family. Mm. And I'd never really felt that. I'd worked, you know, in cabaret and dancing for six or seven years before I went to the Moulin Rouge. And I never really felt that, but when you go to a show, like that where there's 60 people, 60 odd people working on the show, some of them you never get to meet. Um, same as a movie, if you're not shooting a scene with somebody, you might be in the same movie, you never get to meet them. Um, but there was really a family feeling there mm. and a feeling that you were special because, like I said, not that many people get to work at a place like that. Yeah, it really is and, a privilege, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, a complete privilege and an honor, yeah. Mm. yeah. What was your favorite thing to do in Paris? My favorite thing was, we, we lived the nightlife. Mm -hmm. So we would do shows and we would finish at 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> that was our life. We would then go out for dinner or breakfast, uh, if you could call it that, <laughs> afterwards. So my favorite thing to do would be 2 a.m. We finish the show, we're still on a high. We go out to eat, a lot of us, down to our favorite restaurant down the road. Um, and then at sunrise, I lived, I lived uh, when I first got to Paris, I lived right near the Moulin Rouge around the corner uh, on a road called Rue Le Pique. Um, you keep walking straight up that road, it takes you straight up to Montmartre. And my favorite thing to do would be to walk up to Montmartre to Sacre Coeur at sunrise. Oh, wow. um, and like I say, I do say it in the book, um, when Paris is waking up, I'm going to sleep. And I'd sit up at Sacre Coeur and I'd watch the sunrise and you can see the whole of Paris, you can see right down to the Eiffel Tower, uh, you can see the Moulin Rouge down in Pigalle. And uh, I always had the feeling I couldn't believe I was there. That was my favorite thing to do. Have a cup of coffee, watch the sunrise in Sacre Coeur. Wow, mm -hmm. that sounds amazing. I, I never did that when I lived in Paris because I had an early bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. But I love <laughs> Except right. I stayed awake until my yeah. bedtime. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> what is your favorite French food? Uh, you know what, I'm not a very big foodie, but I have to say onion soup. Oh yeah. And like it's like what we say, what do you call French onion soup in France? I, yes. It's just onion soup, right? I was just saying that to my kids the other day. I said, do you think they call them French fries in France? Right. <laughs> so actually, um, onion soup, the, the modern version, how we know it now, mm -hmm. uh, originated in France in the 18th century. So oh, okay. I call it a French food. It's been around for many centuries, but they yeah. made it into what it is now. 
That's my favorite dish. I just love it. It's a, it's a it. meal. Yeah, I love the mm. cheese and the yeah. bread. And yeah. That's so delicious. This, this is going to be of interest uh, to everybody. Did you notice that the Parisians live differently to other people and cultures? And if so, why? Because I definitely noticed that. Yeah, no, I noticed that straight away. I mean, on arriving in Paris, um, the first thing that struck me, of course, is just coming from a country like South Africa where we, we weren't exposed to cities like that. And um, the architecture and the history and the culture of Paris was just amazing to me. I found the culture of sidewalk cafes and people watching mm -hmm. because that's what the French love to do. Mm -hmm. And we also say it in the book, Baron Haussmann in the 18th century designed Paris. Mm to have large sidewalks. So they could put uh, tables and, and chairs outside of the cafes. I love that. And that I think is a, is a very unique French thing. Um, I've seen it in other parts of the world, but I have a feeling that it originated in France. Yes. Because that's what they do. I used to love it, sitting on the Champs Elysees yes, in the morning, me too. after a <laughs> night out, having a cup of coffee, people are getting up, going to work, everyone's watching, it's very sociable. Yeah. It's a great place to take a date yeah. and just sit. I mean, how romantic to sit on the Champs Elysees at a cafe, mm -hmm. you know, having a drink in yeah. the mornings. It's beautiful. Oh, I loved people yeah. watching there as well. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite thing about living in Paris? Um, working at the Moulin Rouge. Yeah. Uh, like I was saying, the, it really struck me, the architecture and the culture. And just walking around the city, it's, it's just such an amazing city. It has so much history. Every street is named. There's a reason why it's named that, and it's named after a general because he was famous for doing something. Right, right. Um, that's really what, what amazed me about being there. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any habit or tradition that you picked up in Paris that you still do today in America? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Before Paris, I actually, I mean, I drink coffee, but in those days back in South Africa, we didn't have Starbucks. It would be a whole thing. You have to go to a restaurant to mm -hmm. have a cup of coffee. And in Paris, I got into the habit of going to sit at a sidewalk cafe, having a great cup of coffee, a cafe au lait or yeah. cafe. So you yeah. have a cafe au lait? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I kind of got into the habit and still to this day, you know, I wake up in the morning and I have a glass of water and a cup of coffee. That's my first thing I do in the mornings. Always. You know, I think Paris really made me a coffee lover as well because mm -hmm. even though when I was there, I would drink tea in the morning, but in the afternoon, always a coffee. Just, yeah. And they're so good. I would get a cafe creme. Yeah. which is a bit more decadent than a right. cafe au lait. Right. Oh. That's funny, that's opposite to me. See, I have oh, yeah. coffee in the morning and, and I have tea in the afternoon. Because <laughs> that's the British side from the South African yes. tradition of cup of tea yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah, well, I've since switched. Now I have coffee in the morning. You know, my husband's English, so now we have tea in the afternoon and right. coffee in the morning. There we so, go. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, Paris has got such a, uh, an energy and a vibrancy to it. And like I say, we say in the book as well that Working at the Moulin Rouge, a place like the Moulin Rouge, uh, being so French and so traditional, that's where you really feel mm. like the pulse of the city, okay. what goes on. And yes, we live the nightlife and Paris turns upside down at night time. Um, it's a whole different feeling at night, different kind of people, uh, different vibe mm. completely. Um, so that was amazing. I mean, I, I found working at the Moulin Rouge, I really got to know Paris and the Parisians. Great. Okay, so we are now joined by Lauren Stevens, who co-authored the book with Cliff, and I just wanted you to meet her, not only because she co-authored the book, but I also think she's such a lovely example of poise and elegance and grace, and I've met, you know, I'm good friends with both of them, and uh, we've had some, we had some fun lunch together in Redwood, and anyway, I noticed that immediately about her, so I definitely wanted to bring her on the channel, so welcome, and thank you for coming. Thank you so much. <laughs> what a compliment from you, coming from you. <laughs> Med Madame Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I just wanted to ask you, what was it like to co-author the book with Cliff? Um, it was a fantastic ride. And what was so great was that Cliff was so committed to the project mm -hmm. and had such a sense of momentum. You know, oftentimes when I work with other authors, there's this sort of stop and start factor. But we just went kind of lightning speed and I think and I hope that the momentum of the story is uh, carried through because of <clears throat> just the, the drive mm. um, <clears throat> that Cliff
Cliff has in, in telling his story. And I tried to capture that yes, with him. You did a wonderful job. Oh, thank, thank you. you. And so the book is called Paris Nights, My Year at the Moulin Rouge. And you can pick it up, obviously, on Amazon.com. And where else can we find the book? Um, various indie bookstores. Yeah. Uh, it's on Amazon. It's on Barnes & Noble. Uh, and a couple of weeks ago, Target Online just picked it up Wonderful. as well, which was amazing. We mm -hmm. had no idea, and the publisher didn't know either. The oh. next minute, it appeared on Target's That's website. Great. So, and it's yeah. getting such great, critically acclaimed reviews. I mean, yeah. it really is um, just, it's the little engine that could, really. And I, so I just yeah. want to say congratulations to both of you. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for joining me here on The Daily Connoisseur. And thank you very much. We'll see you next time.